We've got a, a busy day ahead of us, and, and partly that's because tomorrow we're doing a special live show that'll take place between 8 and 10 o'clock tomorrow morning at the Wilson Theater, and that's going to be in Rupert, and that is in advance of Memorial Day. It's a show that we've been planning now for a couple of months, and uh, want to thank the folks at Ramsey Heating and Electric and the Sergeant Chris Workman Scholarship Fund for getting behind us with this this show tomorrow. If you're also at the theater the last few days, you would have noticed there's a display up uh, related to uh, to all of this, and that display is going to be there through Memorial Day. Because of that, Steve Millington is coming in today instead of tomorrow for his weekly segment. Also, Randy Staples will be joining us in about half an hour. Randy is with Idaho Weekly Briefing. Those things coming up a little later in the program today. And as I say, much to talk about, but I do want to start out with the trip that the president is making overseas. And you may have seen some of it. I was watching the arrival in Saudi Arabia a couple of days ago on television, and I heard the Star Spangled Banner come up as the president came off the plane. And my first thought was the Saudi band is a little out of tune. But the liberals who've been screaming so, well, making so much noise about Trump seem to be a tad, and I say just a tad muted about what's going on right now because, well, he looks presidential. Even the New York Times has an admission in its uh, publication today. Right now, the president, I don't know if this is a live shot or not, I'm looking at my monitor here, and he's at the uh, the Western Wall uh, in Jerusalem uh, wearing a yarmulke as well and offering a prayer. Uh, that may be from an earlier shot, but he was he was going there this morning as part of his visit in Israel. It seems that this has put the liberal media back on its heels, at least for the time being, because they don't quite know how to react. Although, the madness of these people, and I don't mean insane madness, I mean the rage that they're filled with and anything Trump sets them off. While Trump was visiting in Saudi Arabia, he toured this new center, it's a research center, to help deal with Islamic extremism. And while there, there's a glowing globe as part of the decoration when you walk into this building. And he was there with el-Sisi, the president of Egypt, along with the Saudi king, and the three of them stopped, and they posed for a photograph, a portrait. Uh, They put their hands down on the globe, in other words, to show some unity. Now, today, Yahoo News, which is a flaming, left-wing, liberal, mainstream media publication, is complaining that, uh, you know, ha ha, look at the funny picture. President Trump's got his hands on a glowing orb. Gee, what kind of evil does that represent? Ha 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 ha. Ho, 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 ho. This is what they've come to. This is how far mainstream media has fallen in its rage. The president has his photograph taken with two other world leaders with their hands all on a globe simultaneously to show unity. And the left, I mean, well, yes, the left is redundant with the Democrat Party and the mainstream media and academia. They have a conniption fit. It just doesn't seem to stop. Mr. Trump speaking over the course of the weekend in Saudi Arabia. And if you happened happened to see any of the coverage, the pageantry of it was impressive. I, you know, I don't know that I'd enjoy living in Saudi Arabia, but they certainly put on a good welcome. We should remind you they didn't do this for a Barack insane Obama when he was president of the United States. The media is jumping all over Trump's remarks in Saudi Arabia, but what's so difficult to understand? That means honestly confronting the crisis of Islamic extremism and the Islamists and Islamic terror of all kinds. I was listening yesterday to some liberal yammerers trying to interpret what the president is saying while he's in Saudi Arabia. And they got into a discussion over whether, well, he's not saying Islamic, and sometimes he says Islamist. What's the difference between Islamic and Islamist? And gee, Willikers, does that mean that there's a change in his position from the election? And maybe all of those knuckle-dragging yokels out in middle America who voted for him will now see him differently. Because that's their impression of you. You're just a dumb, dumb, dummy, and they're a smart, smart, smarty as they smoke their marijuana joints and and guzzle their cabernet and tell each other how smart they are and they're the smartest people who walk into any room. That's their view on all of this. So they're parsing the use of Islamist versus Islamic. And he didn't say uh, radical Islamic terrorism. Well, he said Islamic terrorism. Should he have gotten up and danced a jig and then, you know, come up with a couple of other adjectives? Would that make them all feel better? 
811. Bill Cowley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. I thought it was clear. He said, All right, you guys, uh, we're not going to interfere. We're not going to do nation building. And we're, we're being told it's also it's a repudiation of Barack Obama. Actually, it's a repudiation not only of Barack Obama, but George W. Bush and the neocons who were in his administration who felt that we were going to build nations around the world and spread democracy even though we're technically not a democracy, but a republic. In other words, we were going to try to put the template of our culture down on other parts of the world. And Mr. Trump simply said what I think a lot of Americans believe. Look, you don't bother us. We're not going to bother you when it comes to the way you run your governments. You know, we may not like it, but it's none of our business. On the other hand, we have some mutual concerns here. And that would be, I don't know, ISIS and al-Qaeda and Iran. And if we can take care of all of those bullies together, we'll work with you. But you've got to do some of the heavy lifting yourselves. That includes settling refugees in your own countries. You've got to do these things, and we'll get along just swimmingly. That also sets off the liberals out there because Barack Obama just simply ignored the rest of the world. And libertarians also favor that approach too. But Trump's approach is somewhat libertarian as well. He's just saying if these guys mess with us, like they messed with you, we're together. And if you don't mess with us, everyone's fine. No trouble here, right? Uh, most people in this country live their lives in that very same way. He went on to say, when I mentioned that the Muslim world would have to do some of the heavy lifting, he went on to say that. And I looked around the room as he was saying it, and nobody seemed to have an issue. Terrorism has spread all across the world. But the path to peace begins right here on this ancient soil in this sacred land. America is prepared to stand with you in pursuit of interests and common security. But the nations of the Middle East cannot wait for American power to crush this enemy for them. The nations of the Middle East will have to decide what kind of future they want for themselves, for their country, and frankly, for their families and for their children. It's a choice between two futures, and it is a choice America cannot make for you. A better future is only possible if your nations drive out the terrorists and drive out the extremists. Drive them out. Drive them out of your places of worship. Drive them out of your communities. Drive them out of your holy land and drive them out of this earth. This is not John Kerry bringing along James Taylor overseas so James Taylor can sing You've Got a Friend after some terrorist attack. This is somebody saying, look, we got to get rid of these guys. I don't want any flowery uh, baloney here. We're going to get rid of them. Drive them out, kill them, dispatch them, get rid of them, and then everything will be fine. And the audience seemed very receptive to that. What part of just being blunt upsets American liberals so much? We're at 56 right now. Looks like we're finally out of the doldrums when it comes to the weather. Uh, March lasted a very, very long time, and here we are in late May. Uh, temperatures this week, primarily most days, are going to be in the 70s with plenty of sunshine. I'd like to sit here and say there's no rain in sight, but it seems every couple of days, out of nowhere, the rain suddenly gets added into the forecast. But it's going to be relatively mostly dry for the next week to 10 days ahead from the long-range forecast. And the weather is a service of Mountain Home Auto Ranch in Mountain Home. Bill Colley with you this morning on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. Just a few clippings I wanted to share with you. Uh, there's a fellow writing at American Greatness today, and the writer says that if you're looking for comparisons, and this is what liberals don't get, he said if you're making a comparison, and he's using the movie Star Wars or the Star Wars series, Trump is Han Solo and not Darth Vader. Now, the left thinks that he's Darth Vader and he's out to get them, despite the fact that he is anything but a, what you'd call doctrinaire conservative. He's a pragmatist, like a lot of Democrats have been and some Republicans have been over the years. The great founding ideals, this writer says, of the United States have been under attack for more than a century, and he cites Woodrow Wilson, the Democrat, who said that the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution had to be shelved and we needed to take a different approach because they were outdated. 
And the writer goes on to say that Franklin Roosevelt argued that American founding and a liberty based on natural rights had become outdated. To the progressive, there is no eternal truth. Well, when you, frankly, when they're godless, why would you expect them to see that? President Trump is proud of American history and unashamed to assert U.S. sovereignty and immigration trade and national defense. He refuses to submit to guilt-mongering. Trump understands the founding principle of the value of individual natural rights. It is this foundation that is essential for real liberty to exist. A couple of other writers also chiming in on the media derangement syndrome. Uh, Wesley Pruden, one of the great columnists in the United States. You may not know his name well, but for decades he was the editor of the Washington Times, a very conservative publication out of Washington, and before that had been an editor of a large newspaper in Little Rock, Arkansas. Destroying Donald Trump is all that matters in the newsrooms of the mainstream media, Pruden writes, so-called and by any means necessary. Rarely have so many hysterics contributed to so much national conversation. And he goes on to say, it's hard to imagine anything more calculated to invoke a Second Amendment answer to such a 25th Amendment coup. You now have not only liberals, but some conservatives writing for liberal newspapers. Ross Dothet of the New York Times comes to mind, who says, you don't need to impeach Trump, just have the cabinet members remove him under the 25th Amendment. As if, you know, well, I live in Manhattan, I know better, and this is what should happen. And it would be something reminiscent of a coup. And Mr. Pruden says it would be nothing less than a coup by the Republican elites and the press so that many Americans believe have rigged the elections meant to express the nation's will. He says, you don't have to be a Trump friend, supporter, or voter to see where this would inevitably lead. The United States has never been a banana republic or a third world dump where elections are ultimately determined in the streets, but this would be the ultimate national indignity wrought by just those who would go to civil war to depose an indignity. And he says the Post, the Washington Post, accuses the president of dispensing national secrets to the Russians. Based on the word of an anonymous source who concedes he wasn't in the meeting and denied by those who were. The New York Times says it heard a passage read from a memo written by James Comey telling how the president asked him to go easy on Mike Flynn and denied by the White House. In other words, nobody's actually seen the memo. Even Alan Dershowitz was saying over the weekend, media won't be having him on much anymore, at least not liberal media, because, again, there's no, there's no crime there, is what he was saying. And so you're just blowing smoke at this point for your own political opportunism, and media is going along with you. And then there's a writer, I happen to see this over at the Washington Examiner, also a conservative publication out of the nation's capital, latecomer really to that game. It hasn't been around nearly as long as the Times. But a writer named Eddie Scary says this, tips for reporting on Trump. Mainstream media just assumes the worst, uh, the worst, and then they just dismiss the context, and they go ahead and print whatever they like if it makes Donald Trump look bad. Because they don't like him, they don't want you to like him, and, you know, golly gee, they know so much more than you do. They've interviewed a lot of really smart people, and that made them smart by osmosis, don't you know? It's 58. Bill Colley with you on Top Story. Randy Staples will be joining us about 8.40. Steve Millington, possibly at 8.30. We're 20 minutes after 8 o'clock on News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. Randy Staples is, is going to talk to us a little bit about his uh, column. You may have already seen it over the weekend, and it appears in several newspapers in the region. When he joins us in about 20 minutes, he's writing about Alex Jones and how quickly Jones folded his tents and quietly when it came to his uh, troubles with Chobani yogurt. I've said before on the air here, you know, Jones makes a lot of predictions. You may remember Jade Helm and then nothing comes out of it, and yet his devotees, they stay with the man, even though he's really in business just to sell them survival gear, of which has made him a very wealthy and uh, powerful man. 822, Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. A reminder, on Wednesday morning between 8.30 and 9 o'clock, we'll be joined in studio by one of the medical pros from Tripp Family Medicine here in Twin Falls. Tripp Family Medicine is located on Fillmore Street, directly across from the main post office. They're also looking for new patients. And often as a patient, they can see you on the very same day. And if you're looking for immunizations for both adults and children, it's the place to go. And remember, like they say at Trip Family Medicine, life's too short not to feel good. We have a caller joining us. Caller, you're up next. You're on the air on KLIX with Bill Colley. Go ahead. Well, I think we have to be reminded that it was the Saudis uh, that 9-11, I think uh, all of the 
terrorists involved in that were from Saudi Arabia. They're not taking any refugees. Um, you know, they continued to hide their theocracy behind the facade of a religion. And they're not our friend any more than the Soviet Union or Russians are or the Chinese or the Iranians. I'm sorry, but, you know, we just have to be study history and realize that Islam's 1,400 years of killing and uh, mayhem on people that don't want to convert to their theocracy, we just have to remember that. So I, I think Trump is being very tolerant, um, but we have to realize it's all a big game with them. Anything they can do to play the chess pieces and look like they're wanting peace, Bill, I think is is all superfluous, and they're in bed with the terrorists. I think the Saudis are putting a tremendous amount of money into the terrorist activity. Well, they put a lot of money into the, the the Wahhabist, you know, which is a small sect of Islam that opens up schools in this country and teaches these young people, many of whom end up becoming jihadists themselves. I think Trump was doing two things. Number one, he said, look, you got an enemy named Iran. We do too. You can work with me on that. But the other part of this was it was almost a, a polite reminder to say to them, you gotta, you you can't sit back and just you know, pretend that you're helping us out on this any longer. You got to get involved, and we'll see if they do. Well, uh, yeah, and you know, words are words are cheap. Action. I don't think you're going to see much action against because they're all part of the same cabal to uh, overthrow the, the earth, uh, the planet with their theocracy. And I, I think we have to be really careful. And, of course, this welcoming deal here in, in Twin Falls. I mean, people, we better wake up um, to the fact that once they get to a certain population, and it doesn't have to be a, a majority or even close to it, once they get about 10%, they exercise, demand their food, their culture, their, their enclaves. It's already happening in this country. Look what's happening in Europe, and there won't be many years we continue bringing these people in here, and certainly not all of them are terrorists, but when push comes to shove, they will follow the Islam creed of uh, either convert or kill. Well, thank you much for the call, and I think that uh, uh, there's a story out today at uh, Daily Caller, and it's a story out of a small town, well, 15,000 people, I guess in Idaho that would be considered a m major metropolis. It's a place in Austria. A 15-year-old girl was walking home, and she was raped by three men. Uh, investigators believe that they are from Afghan, Afghanistan and Somalia. The town has now said no more refugees. So I guess the Austrians have become bigots and racists and haters, too, uh, because they like to, well, we're not going to hand over our daughters to you, you know, any longer. You have a group of liberals in this country who think that if you've got virgin daughters, or even if they're not virgins, that you should be handing them over to these people. Maybe that will appease them. And appeasement does not work. I think that the, the Trump visit to the Middle East, by going there first, though, instead of Canada or Mexico or Philippines, by going to the Middle East first and telling them, you got to do something, and you got to take care of some of these refugees, too. I read a story last week, and it was out of, uh, might have been even the New York Times, but it pointed out that, indeed, the United States is taking more refugees than anyone else right now. Well, it's not necessarily just a United States responsibility. He's putting them on notice in a polite fashion. This is what we see in public. We don't know what was going on behind the scenes. But he, if he's telling them that in public, A, you better take a bigger role in this. We're not going to handle it all. We expect, we expect that you're going to do this. You want my help against Iran? then you're going to stop playing both sides of the coin. I think the other factor in all of this, while he may not go to Jerusalem and give a, a full-throated endorsement to making that the capital of Israel, which he said he would do, I hope that he'll still come around to that and make it public, uh, public declaration as president. But I think by going to Israel second, he's telling the, the folks in that part of the world that this is non-negotiable. Israel isn't going to go away. It, 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 I have a friend, he works for the United Nations as a member of the Israeli delegation. Ido Aharoni is his name. And Ido, well, he grew up in California, and then he moved to Israel. So, you know, I want to talk about culture shock. 
uh, but he's a very conservative guy. He's a member of the current government. And uh, Ito likes to joke with me that Israel is the 51st state. And a guy from California might say that. Maybe we could actually trade California and take Israel in. It would. Might, some people say that would be a wonderful thing to do. But I, I think that if he can make it clear that that we, that commitment remains, which was not evident under the last eight years with the previous guy in the White House, these are all important things. But again, it comes back to this. He's telling the Arab world, you leave other people alone, they may leave you alone. Simple as that. And, and that's a message that I think has to be made clear to them. You leave Israel alone, you leave the United States alone, we'll leave you alone. Don't go around messing with people because it could get messy for you. Coming up on 8.30 in just a moment, Bill Colley with you on Top Story. Steve Millington is going to join us in a moment. Uh, Randy Staples also scheduled to join us in about 15 minutes from Idaho Weekly Briefing. Got about a minute here, so caller, got to make it quick. Go ahead. Well, one of the things is, uh, does the rest of the world really believe that Donald Trump will be impeached or even damaged enough that he will be unable to govern? I mean, you know, the things he's accomplished, which are never brought up, are already going into effect. And uh, like there were, like I've said before, 100 things in 100 days that he's accomplished, we never hear about him. And so, but will the rest of the world believe that he is still as viable as he was and realize that what he's saying in these speeches, you know, abroad is going to take effect? And uh, will they believe that? I'll hang up. Hey, thank you much for the telephone call. Uh, coming up on 8.30, and it's 59. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX, and News Radio 1310.com. I mentioned one of our sponsors for tomorrow morning's live show in Rupert, Ramsey Heating and Electric. Some of you are going to be turning on that air conditioner this week for the first time. Flip it on today. Find out if it's in good working order. If it isn't, call the pros at Ramsey Heating and Electric. They'll come out. They'll get the job done right and get it done right the first time. The company located at 2600 Overland Avenue in Burley, Ramsey Heating and Electric at 678-0459. Remember, they sell warm winters and cool summers.